Hello everyone, my name is Victor Lima and in this video I will show you how to plan a microservice based software project. Well, different of a monolithic software, when you want to develop a microservice based project, you should first think about your project. You need first to plan your project because if you don't do it, you will have troubles with your project. A lot of troubles about scalability, deploy, and databases. So keep in mind, the first thing that you should do every time that you want to develop a microservice-based project is first sit down and plan your project. This is the most important step when we talk about microservices software. And in this video, I will show you how to do it in the right way. So let's get started. First thing first, the first step is identify your project's business capabilities. So the question is, what is a business capability? Well, in a nutshell, we can say that it is a determinate functionality of your project, a determinate part of your project, or in other words, a feature of your project, right? So let me show you an example. Well, in an e-commerce project, you have some business capabilities like user management system, product management system, payment, shop cart, and much more. So each of these items are business capabilities. And as you can see here, each item here is a feature, is a functionality of my e-commerce project. So the first thing that you want to do, nice, that you should do when you start to develop a microservice based project is identify your project's business capability. Identify your project's features, your project's functionalities. But why we need to do it? Simple, because in the future, each capability will be a service a microservices of your service suite, right? So the process of playing a microservice based software starts here. When you think about your project's business capabilities, because in the future, each business capability will be a single service, right? And after you think about your project business capabilities, it's time to start planning your project itself. Try to make a outline diagram of your project. You can do it with a pen, a pencil, or using some software to make diagrams like Lucid Chart. As you can see here, I make the e-commerce project diagram and I divide it in business capabilities. So here I have the payment, payment capability, the shop cart capability, the user management capability and so on. So the second step is it. You need to plan your project diagram. And in the future, each capability will be a single service. Nice. Now, it's time to me presenting you some rules about the microservice development. The first rule is each service should have a single responsibility, right? So the microservice architecture follow the single responsibility principle, SRP, from the objected oriented programming. It says that services 
should have one primary job and they should do it well. Let me show an example. Here I have an OOP example, an object oriented programming example of SRP. SRP means single responsibility principle, right? It says that each service should have one primary job and they should do it well. This concept came from the object-oriented programming. And here I have an example of SRP in object-oriented programming. As you can see here, I have in class following the SRP concept and I have another class that doesn't follow the SRP concept. Why? I ask you. Simple. As you can see here, in this first class, we have each method. Each method do one single thing. The method walk, walk. The method jump, jump. The method eat, eat. The method speak, speak. Each method has a single responsibility, right? In this second class, the thing is different. We have two methods, and as you can see here, by the name of each method, we, we have the walk and jump method, speak and eat method. As you can see here, those methods do more than one thing. Those methods doesn't have one single responsibility. Those methods here have more than one responsibility. So it is the SRP concept, right? Each method should have one single responsibility. The same example repeats for the microservice architecture. Each service should do one single thing and should do it well. As you can see here, in this, in this side, we have a service use and login system. And in this other side, we have two service, user management and authentication service. And I ask you, which of those are right? following the SRP concept? Well, the right question is this second one here. Because this first one, as you can see, mix two services, two responsibilities into one. Here, in this service, we have a user management service and the authentication service in one single service and it is bad because in the microservice architecture each service should follow the SRP concept right the single responsibility principle right so this is wrong because we have a service that do more than one thing and this second one here is right because we have a user management system that just manage manage users and we have the authentication service which make the authentication of users in the system for instance right after that we have another rule which is about the bounded context when designing microservices a common point of confusion is how big or small a service should be. When we define a bounded context, we define what services each service can interact with. In other words, to define an area of interaction between services. We want to design services that have low coupling with other services. 
and because it we should define limits to our services so bounded context is a way to define limits in services so when we define a bounded context we say to a service what services it can interact with this is a crucial step because when you define bounded context in services you already know what services this service can interact with and you can develop the service in a better way nice so it's really important that you define bounded context inside your microservice software and here I have an example of a microservice project with bounded context. As you can see here, I have a by process context. In this by process context, I have my payment service with my product management service. I have the order management service and I have the shop cart service. Each of these service are part of my process context. Each of these services communicate with themselves, right? So it is a context, it is a bounded context, the by process context. And inside this e-commerce, inside this e-commerce microservice application, I have another context, which is the which is the authentication context to make the user login into the system. And in this context exists the user management service and the authentication services. Each of these services interact with, right? And these services here interact with each other. Now it's time to talk about the last rule, which is about databases. So databases in a microservice based software. A microservice should not share access with the same database which another microservice connects to. Each microservice must have its own databases. But why? Simple. Because when you mix two services data in one single database we have troubles because you're gonna have troubles in the deploy in the scalability questions and in the migrations and things like that and as i say here when we mix microservice data on a single database doing so will inevitable cause problems when trying to coordinate data migrations such as schema changes it's best to have microservices fully manage the data stores they use for persistence because it it guarantee for us the low coupling in the system and it is very good so that's it i hope you enjoy and if you like please let me know in the comment sections below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Here we make new videos six days a week. Bye bye and see you later.